Hey guys, what's up? Rob Shoecraft here with Three Store Fitness. I'm shooting this video outside today. I'm going to sit here and talk at the camera, and it's a beautiful day. I figure I might as well just shoot this in my backyard. We got lovely Raccoon Creek back here. Anyways, all right. Here's the uh, here's the too long day to watch version because this is going to be long, uh, like a lot of videos in the series. Talk about nutrition today. Um, check the description because it's so long. Check the description of this video for the highlights, so to speak, and the, the timestamps so you can jump around a little bit if you want to. Um, what I'm talking about is diet, is nutrition patterns. Uh, basically, diet is key for any goal, all right, regardless. If you're not spending that whole thing I said, if you're not spending uh, time in the kitchen, then your time in the gym is a waste of time, okay? Uh, the whole point of the Zero to Burrito series is to give you the information that you need to get the results you want without having to worry about all the infinite amount of confusing information out there. And that's what I'm going in with in this diet, this nutrition video, okay? A uh, good diet is a nutrition pattern that keeps you progressing to whatever your goal is. And it's one that's going to be sustainable. It's going to be one that you do forever. I'm, I'm reading off here because oh, this is too long to watch. I want to make sure I stick to the script. Um, gives you a simple approach that will work for most people. That's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to start with that. It's going to be one that's going to help just about anybody burn fat, build muscle, and you're gonna be able to do all that without turning your life upside down. Like I said, it's gonna be, it's gonna work for most people, and it's gonna work for as long as you want it to. Um, I'm also gonna take a little side trip to talk about salt, alcohol, fruit, fruits and vegetables, caffeine, basically like the four food groups that everybody seems to, they just get caught up in this web. You know, they, they, they. They demand too much of a hard time with people. There's too much confusion around them. And I just want to clear some things up, give you something to walk away with so you don't have to worry about those four things. And then finally, for folks who really want to take like a long-term deep dive into finding the perfect diet, I share what I think is the perfect strategy. It's a four-phase approach, four-phase approach that I wrote in my nutrition manifesto. I'm doing this a lot. I'm going to continue with that. Uh, I wrote it on my site. And things have changed a little bit about it um, since, I, since I wrote it a couple of years ago. But for the most part, I still feel the same way, so I'll share that too. Alright, on to the video. Yeah, two, two minutes and 45 seconds just to talk about what I'm going to talk about. Strap in. Like I said, check the descriptions below if you want to jump around. You won't hurt my feelings. Or turn it off. Alright, so before talking about nutrition specifically, I do want to talk about goals again i just want to do a serve as a reminder um, if you need a refresh on that goals video that i made uh, about finding your motivation and, and all that kind of happy feel good stuff that is extremely important maybe the most important thing because um, it gives you direction and it gives you fuel to get there um, but let's just talk real quick about that Especially when it comes to goals, eating is one thing that people just struggle with the most. It's what I struggle with the most. Exercise isn't that big of a deal for me anymore. Um, I mean, it is, but eating and, and sleep, you know, I, I, I really, I kind of like obsessed with getting more sleep. Like, I love it. But eating, it's, it's just not, it's not that fun. It's probably the, what, what I struggle with the most. It's what my clients struggle with the most. And just generally speaking, everybody just wants, you know, wants to be able to, what's the easiest way to get a six pack and all that crap, right? So it's very, very important uh, when it comes to setting appropriate goals. So you want to, you want to find a sustainable, uh, effective nutrition pattern. And that's a, a very goal driven endeavor. Okay, so you need to consider your goals, the ones that you said in that video. You need to consider your vision, right? We talk, we use that word. But more importantly, you need, to, you need to, to remember the motivation of why you set that in the first place. So if your goal is to have a six-pack, we'll use that example again. Why do you want that six-pack, right? You want to pick up chicks? Like, what, what is it? Because if you dig down enough, you say, okay, well, why do I want to pick up girls, right? Well, and you drill down and you find out that maybe you're just lonely, right? Get a dog. 
like you save yourself a whole lot of trouble of, of doing all the work to get a six pack when it, when it turns out the whole reason you wanted one is just because you're lonely, right? So get get it get a dog. It's it, it, no dog is free or whatever that 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 thing is. Look, I've had a six pack before, and I've had six dogs. I'm gonna tell you, it's a lot harder to take care of a six pack. All right, <laughs> dogs are easy. So that whole point, it's kind of silly. But the point is, you, you make sure you're setting a goal for the right reason. And another reason, aside from saving yourself trouble, is that you're going to run into constant hurdles. You're going to want to quit all the time, especially when you're starting out. So if you have some shallow reason, I'm not saying that shooting for a six-pack is shallow, but if your reason for it is shallow, by shallow I don't mean like I'm judging you, I mean like it's not going to, it doesn't have any roots, it doesn't have any foundation. It's something that you don't really actually care about. If that is the case, then when it comes time, when things are hard, which they will be a million times, you need to make sure you have something that's going to make you keep driving, right? So check out that video if you want to. The re, I really wanted to bring that up because I don't, I don't want, I don't want you guys to forget that. Because especially with diet, it's just so dieting is eating right is is hard. It's it's simple. It can't. It should be. I'm going to tell you how. But it is, of the three, it's what I struggle with the most, right? That's why I'm not completely shredded, right? It's because I, I like to eat crap sometimes. Anyways. But um, let's let's move on. So eh, I talked about goal setting. Um, so diet is everything. I already said that. I drove that point home exhaustively in, the, in another video where we talked about the tenets of fitness. If you haven't watched it, it's, it's another long video. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. You can go back to the video. I'll link to it below. And you can jump to the diet part just to kind of hear what I'm talking about, get an overview of what it is. But don't worry about it. We'll, co we'll cover it all more or less in this video. But um, I said if you don't spend as much time in the kitchen as you do in the gym, then you don't get to complain about your results. That's some pretty strong language. Um but it's, it's true, like, you, you, you absolutely have, your diet has to be in line with your goals. It's, it, it, it can't be either I work out, that whole thing about, oh, I, I, I work out so I can eat whatever I want, that's, no one, <laughs> no one who has whatever they want actually says that. It, it just doesn't work that way. But um, what we want to do is kind of shoot for, like, that perfect diet. And I'll give you a spoiler it's impossible. There's no such thing as a perfect diet. But we want to do our best to get there. It is a it's a moving target. All right. Everybody has has different gene expressions. They have different stressors at different times in their lives, which which affect different hormone levels, which can affect how we eat, which can affect what happens when we eat and what we do with the food. All that stuff changes constantly, and it's different for everybody. So there's again, there's no perfect diet. You probably you probably know that, even though you're still looking for one. You sort of have to develop it, and it's 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 a long. It could be a long process, but you could come really close to it. You can achieve any goal, more or less, any realistic goal that you have when it comes to looks, when it comes to performance. Um, with a, with a solid diet, but it's going to take a while to get there. I'm going to lay out my approach. It's a four-phase approach. Take it or leave it. It's very complicated. Well, it's not very complicated, but it, it requires a long journey, if you will, into the process of really finding out what works for you, what doesn't. I'm also going to give some really, really simple approaches that I really recommend that you try. It's what I normally recommend to people when they're you know, when they're, they're setting goals and we're getting started working out with me. Um, so let's, let's, let's talk about that. Um, what is a good diet? Well, it's, it's something that's going to help you progress toward your goals and it's something sustainable. That's very important. That second piece. It's something that you could pretty much do forever, habitually. Um, sustainability though, it comes with, uh, it comes with practice. Diet nutrition pattern sticking eating it's a skill and and just like any skill you have to start simple you have to start with basic fundamentals 
And as you develop those, those healthy habits over time, you can start adding complexity. The closer that you are to your goals, we talked about this a little bit in the other video, the closer that you are to the goals, uh, the harder and more complicated they often get. And that definitely applies to nutrition. But that's why it's important, in my opinion, to start with, start slow with, uh, with the low-hanging fruit, which is kind of a pun. I got a bug on my phone. It's distracting the crap out of me. All right. We still on? Yeah. Um, so you start with that low-hanging fruit, and you build on top of that. And then down the road, your diet, which may seem really complicated to other people, to you, it's just, it's just what you do. Right, because you've built on it over time, you've made little tweaks here and there as needed, if needed, and now you have something that is it's it's very unique, it's very customized, but it's you, and you're able to continue to do it. That's I'm going to tell you how to do all that. Whether or not you do it, that's up to you. Right. So I gave two examples of that. You know, the closer you get, the harder it is. The further away you start from your goal, the the less complicated it is. That whole spectrum. I gave two examples in the last video. One was, you know, we got a guy, overweight guy who eats, uh, who, who drinks three Cokes a day, three Coca-Colas a day. And if we just get him to cut back to one Coke every other day, he's going to see most likely very um, significant, very measurable body composition changes in just a few weeks. But it's not, he's not going to be able to do that forever, right? You can't just cut out coke or cut it back and just expect those results to last forever right um on the other end of the spectrum you have i used uh jeff cavalier the athlete next guy uh, i use him not because he's like the most um the best example of like a, a physically fit specimen although he is a very good example it's because like everybody knows who he is i think he has the he has like 10 million youtube subscribers you probably know who i'm talking about he's absolutely shredded um he didn't just like i'm sure he didn't just wake up one day and be like this is how he said he eats one cheat meal a year okay that's why he's so diced you, i'm sure he didn't just wake up one day and say i'm gonna eat one cheat meal a year and then the rest is history it probably took him years like most people to really get down what has to what, what works for him and i'm sure there's been things that have come up in his life and he's had to make some little adjustments and, and then, you know, go back to the drawing board and, and build those back into his routine. And just like anybody, you don't just wake up with, with those habits. you got to build on them, okay? I can't stress that enough. Um, so, and then I mentioned two diets that... I really like, I'm kind of fascinated with these really simple, sustainable diets, like that Alan Thrall video, where he gives five tips, where you don't really have to track anything, just five basic principles, really easy, really simple rather, stick to those, anybody could do them, and just about anybody will lose weight. I'll link to that video again. I think it's, I don't, Alan Thrall doesn't pay me, I don't, I'm sure he doesn't even know who I am, but it was just such a simple elegant design that I was really impressed by it and I really think it would work for anybody. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're trying to gain weight, you could do something like the like Jim Windler's Building the Monolith um, recommendation. I talked about that. Where he said, eat whatever you want if you're trying to gain weight, but just make sure you also eat a pound and a half of ground beef and 12 dozen, or 12 dozen eggs. Your Gaston. <laughs> One dozen eggs a day, which is like, you know, probably probably pretty questionable for your heart but if you just want to gain weight that'll probably do it okay i want to give you my version of that my version of that kind of semi-simple elegant approach that you could probably do for just about forever without completely turning your life upside down so if you want to gain weight you want to lose what you want to build muscle you want to lose fat and you don't want to do it without flipping things upside down in your life this is for you. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Okay. Um, I've had a lot of success with folks recommending this. And again, it's just all about slowly building these foundational uh, nutrition patterns, these habits. So number one, first thing you do, this is where everybody screws up. 
because they don't they don't they don't want to do it. This is the hardest part. For a week, starting today, download my fitness pal. And I, I'm not affiliated with my fitness pal. I've just tried a lot of different food tracking apps. And it's one, although it does have like ads and you know, it's always trying to get you to buy premium features, just the free version is good enough for almost everybody. Get the premium if you want to, but I'm not telling you to. Download my fitness pal and track what you eat every day for a week. Don't do anything special. You're not trying to, you're the only one that's going to see this. You're not trying to show off. Just eat what you normally eat. Don't, don't think about it at all. Eat how you want. Eat how you normally eat. But track everything. Make sure you track the servings, okay? Servings are, are very, very important, right? So what I mean is like if you eat um, 14 cookies, that's not a serving of Oreos. That's probably, what is that, four servings of Oreos. So make sure you check the, the serving size on the nutrition label, okay? I'll link to a video, or a video, I'll link to something that kind of gives you a, bit, a tutorial on how to read a nutrition label, just in case you don't know. If you don't, it's okay. I'm also going to link to something that shows you um, how to use MyFitnessPal, the basics. It, it includes things like um, how to save meals, how to import recipes, how to save those recipes as meals, and that makes it it's a little it's a little work up front, but it makes it 15 times easier down the road because now you don't have to add ingredients every single time. You just click your meal and it goes in there and, and you're and you're done. All the nutrition facts and all the tracking is handled once you once you build that in place. So I'll link to something that shows you how to do all that. Anyways, track your food for a week. Just eat eat how you normally eat. Okay. Then go through that and look for unhealthy patterns. Look for look for crappy foods. Normally, crappy foods are going to be foods with added sugar <coughs> or foods that have a, a high amount of fat and usually salt. Um, not against salt. I'll talk about that soon. High amount of fat, usually salt, like potato chips. They don't have really a lot of, a lot of uh, protein in them. Okay? And those foods, they're just... Uh, well, they're just not good for you. You don't you don't really need them. Um, they are low hanging fruit. Also, another thing you might want to look for, and this is going to sound a little counterintuitive, but look for things like meals that don't have any protein in them. I did a video, a, a forty minute video on protein. I'll link to that as well. It's very very important, and uh, it, it's one that I really harp on because most people don't get enough of it. So, this is somebody who, like, say, eats a salad for lunch, right? And you find out what's in the salad, and it's literally just lettuce and ranch. That's not good for you. You might as well just eat cookies for, for, for lunch, okay? So, identify those low-hanging fruits. Those things that come up maybe every day, maybe twice a day, maybe every other day. But I'll give you a, a quick example of from yours truly here. Um, I used to eat... I'll give you, a few, like I said, a few examples throughout my life. I used to work in an office that had uh, meetings every day, big catered meetings. They, they ordered lunch for everything. And pizza was, was a constant feature. And so every day, what I used to do is I, I'd get on, this is when I was like 300 pounds and there was not a whole lot of muscle to speak of. I'd get on, I, was, I, I managed the uh, IT environment. So I would look on the Outlook calendar and I would see when those meetings were, and I'd set alerts for myself so that as soon as the meetings were over, I'd go into the break room where they put all the leftovers, and I'd just, and this is after lunch, and I'd eat my lunch, but then I'd also eat whatever pizza was out there. So I was like getting, <laughs> I was just picking out, basically, just getting a ton. Those, those pizzas would be a time, this would be something I would recognize as a crappy nutrition pattern. Another time, uh, when I was working at the, uh, the hospital, uh, I used to go down the cafeteria about 2 o'clock every day after lunch, and I'd get myself a little soft-serve ice cream cone or a thing of cookies or a, a healthy alternative like a granola bar, which is really just fancy junk food. Um, that would be another time. Another time, like when I was in, when I was in high school, holy crap, um, I used my lunch almost every day was two bags of chips, two candy bars, and two Mountain Dews. 
All right, and then when I go to work on my lunch, on my work break, I'd eat, um, I drink a YooHoo, I drink another, or I eat another candy bar, and sometimes another Mountain Dew, right? Um, and then throughout most of, most of my adult life, I'd have about three to six drinks a night, and not even sharing with you what I would sometimes have on the weekend. So all those are examples, extreme examples, but examples of actually, that were actually from my life in the last 15 years. Well, I would be able to identify some low-hanging fruit. I'm sure you have something like that. It might not be that extreme, but but I'm sure you have something like that. Um, so, step three. So you've identified, you've, you've tracked your food, you've identified the uh, the uh, crappy nutrition patterns. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those one of those nutrition patterns. The low-hanging fruit, and you're going to replace it with a lean protein source in a fruit or a vegetable. A lean protein source with about 20 to 40 grams of protein in it. And I, in that protein video, I talked about what that might look like, right? Uh, a, a chicken breast or um, a, a bowl of low-fat Greek yogurt with some berries in it, some strawberries, and maybe some raw honey on top if you want to. So if you look over your MyFitnessPal log, and you see that you had a donut three times in that week at breakfast, or whenever. You might take a, you might get a, a bowl of, of low-fat Greek yogurt instead with a little honey and some strawberries and eat that instead, okay? The key though, for all of the, everything I'm gonna talk about from this point forward is meal prep. So have it ready. You gotta if you're gonna if you're gonna drink eat Greek yogurt the day before or in that in the morning before you go to work or whenever it is that you're eating those donuts, scoop a cup a couple scoops of, of, of Greek yogurt into a Tupperware container, throw some straw strawberries frozen or fresh, whatever, squirt some honey in there if you want, take that with you, put it in a cooler, or bring it in a bag and put it in the fridge at lunch, whatever the situation calls for, and you have it with you. If you don't have it with you, you're not going to eat it, okay? So when that when it comes time to those, you know, that time that you were eating the donut, you eat the bowl of Greek yogurt instead. Very, very simple. Now you're going to do that for two weeks. Two weeks is kind of an arbitrary timeline. Two, three weeks. See how that works. Measure your progress. Now, by progress, I mean a couple different things. One, we could be talking about weight. If your goal is weight loss, you can step, step, step on the scale and take a look. I also talked about in the other video why checking your belt loops might even be a better way to do it. If, you might, if, you're, if, you're, if you're exercising, if you're on a resistance training program and you're building muscle, the, the scale isn't going to tell the full, full story. So, you know, see how your clothes fit you. If you're making progress and you very well likely will be, that's a good sign. <clears throat> Another thing in terms of progress, is how often you're successful making that substitution, okay? So I want you to keep track. I'm just asking you to do one little thing right now. I want you to keep track of how many times you successfully substitute a bowl of Greek yogurt for a donut or the other way around, okay? If you, if you fail to, 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 if you eat the donut instead of the Greek yogurt or, or both, um, write that down. Don't beat yourself up, just write it down. If you are successful, write it down. And then at the end of the week, see how many times you did it. If you did it for 80% of the time, right? If you did four out of five, four out of five days successfully, you're gonna see progress, you're gonna see results. So make that behavior, I talked about this in the goal setting video, make that behavior your, your goal, your measure of progress, okay? And the, and the actual progress, the weight loss or the fat loss or whatever, it will follow. So you do that. That substitution is now going to be a habit. It's going to be a fixture of your life. Now you're, you're not really eating donuts. You're eating a bowl of Greek yogurt with, with, with strawberries. You're not going to be able to do that forever, though. I mean, you can do that forever. But what I mean is you're not going to make progress forever. You're, go you're going to plateau eventually. You can't just substitute chicken and broccoli for donuts and expect to have a six-pack. You're probably going to need to now do something else. 
So, look back at your food log. Nothing else has really changed except for that, that, that substitute. Look back at your food log, see what else you can work on. Another low hanging fruit or another crappy nutrition pattern that you can make the same substitute, a lean protein source in a fruit or a vegetable, just a serving. It doesn't have to be a whole head of broccoli. It could be a couple pieces, right? Just a, you know, half of a cup. Repeat that for as long as you want for the next 40 years and you will be much healthier. You will look much healthier and you'll have a, a rock solid pattern in place. You'll still have screw ups. I still have screw ups all the time, but the bulk of your diet, right? Is going to be solid enough to get just about anything you want done for the, for the general population. That's going to be plenty. Okay. Here's the problem with that strategy. Um, it's too simple. It's not really sexy. <laughs> uh, people love diets, right? And that's why I developed a little bit more complicated approach. That's why I wrote this huge 23,000 word nutrition manifesto on my website. It's because people love diets. They're, they're, they're fascinated by them. It's just a simple basic nutrition change that I just talked about, even though it will work totally fine for almost anybody for almost an indefinite amount of period of time. It's, it's not good enough, right? It's not, not, like I said, it's not sexy enough. So I'm going to talk about a more detailed approach in a moment. But first, I want to take a little side trip and talk about four food groups that they get, in my opinion, way too much attention for most people. People get caught, like I said in the, in the first part of the video, people get caught up in, the, in, in their webs of of complexity and, and confusion and it's a whole paralysis by analysis thing and they never actually do anything they never get anything done because they get stuck and it's these these four things always come up so number one is salt sodium salt is not bad okay uh, you need salt if you avoid sodium completely if there's no sodium in your diet you will probably die okay it's it is important it's not bad now, if your cardiologist tells you that you need to keep your sodium under a certain level throughout the day, then do that, okay? They know what's best for your heart. But for most people, don't sweat the details. I was talking to a uh, girl one time. I've actually had this co forms of this conversation multiple times. But I was talking to a girl one time, <clears throat> one of my clients. She was about 100 pounds overweight. Um relatively inactive very very poor diet she liked to eat a lot of uh, like prepackaged pastries like hostess stuff you know and i said well let's talk about substituting those pastries for a, a healthier snack like how do you feel about beef jerky beef jerky and she said i wrote this down paraphrasing i love beef jerky my husband makes it all the time but it has so much salt Guys, you got to focus on the big picture stuff here. Um, trading a lean, high protein snack like beef jerky for a freaking ho ho, I don't care how much salt it has in it, it's going to be a win. All right? Um, it's just, it's, it's a no brainer. I don't care who you are. So, as far as salt goes, just do everything else I'm talking about and don't worry too much about salt. Just, just don't. On the other hand, don't eat handfuls of it. I mean, I know some people do, some like really high-end athletes with very, very specific needs supplement with salt. I'm not talking to those people, all right? That's probably not you. If you are really interested in that, do, you know, do your homework and, and, and feel free to experiment. But for most people, just eat, all right? Just eat good stuff. Don't worry about the salt content. It's, it's, it's not going to kill you unless your doctor tells you that it is. Then listen to them. I think that point is clear, I hope. All right. Second thing, alcohol. My old, my old friend. Alcohol, let's talk about a couple things about it. It has calories. Alcohol has calories. It's, a, it's like, we'll call it the fourth macro. Alcohol has seven grams of calories, sorry, seven calories per gram. All right? So a shot of liquor, straight liquor, no sugar in it, a shot of vodka, it's about 65 calories. 
just take that for what it's worth. <clears throat> just know that those calories do add up if you drink a lot. But if you're just having like a, a vodka soda at night, or you're having like scotch on the rocks. Hang on, new video here. So yeah, if you're just having a drink every night, you're having uh, or every every now and then you're having a, a vodka soda, you're having a scotch on the rocks, you're having a, a beer, you're having a glass of wine. You know, if that's what you like to do, do your thing. You know, but if you're drinking a lot, those calories do add up. Um, especially if, if you're drinking mixed drinks with stuff with sugar in it, that adds up real fast. My main gripe with alcohol is not the calories. I can work with those. It's not that big of a dent. Okay, calories by themselves. My main gripe is it's twofold. One, and, and it's the reason why I've drastically cut back on drinking. I still drink a little bit. <clears throat> One is that it screws with my sleep. Uh, I talked about how important sleep is. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Sleep is, is absolutely crucial. Um, it's the biggest recovery tool you have. You tend to fall asleep a little faster, a little easier when you got a little bit of uh, you got a little alcohol in your system, you know. It's uh, but it has some sedative qualities. But your quality of sleep is worse, even by just a couple drinks. And I'm I've been real busy. Everybody talks about how busy they are. Well, I'm I'm one of them. I've been I've been real busy the past couple of years. So I go to bed later than I probably should, and I wake up early almost every morning. And I found that even if I just have a drink, I just don't feel the same. My performance, I, I've said I've started working out in the morning. My performance is worse. I just, I, I'm not even talking about hangovers. I'm not even talking about headaches. I'm talking about just, I just don't feel the same. And it's almost certainly because I didn't get the best sleep that I could have. Duration aside, the quality wasn't there. Alcohol messes with your sleep quality. It just, it does. Um, it also has kind of on the, along the same lines an impact on recovery beyond sleep, okay? This is more like if you're drinking, excuse me, more than a couple drinks. This is talking about if you, you know, if you're really putting them away. Like I said, I used to, it wasn't that uncommon for me to crack six beers and watch a movie at night. Um, that really adds up. That really starts to screw things up. Um, your cortisol levels go up when you're drinking a lot, which is a stress hormone, which is going to just sabotage recovery. You're going to get lower testosterone levels. Um, muscular protein synthesis rates drop. So basically building muscle. Um, you get less, uh, plasma amino acid levels. I'll link to a study below that kind of talks about this. One that uh, Brad, Brad Schoenfeld was talking about. He's like the, he's as far as like uh, research goes, he's sort of the man for hypertrophy, um, <clears throat> for, for muscle building and fat loss, that sort of thing. Uh, it, it's just, it's bad. It's bad for you. Recovery wise, it's poison. Um, if you're drinking a lot. If you just want to drink a little bit every now and then, you want to have a little bit, go for it. Uh, you know, whatever. If it, if it fits, go for it. If it fits your macros, go for it. Um, you don't need to have a glass of dry red wine every day to have a healthy heart, right? You do all the other stuff I'm talking about. See the theme here? Do all the other, the simple, the basic stuff. Your heart's going to be just fine without drinking a glass of red wine. But if you enjoy it, if it's something that you just like, you don't have a problem, you don't have, you know, you, you don't have a dependency on it. Um, you don't feel like your sleep is really that negatively affected by it, go for it, man. I'm not going to stop you. Um, let's talk about fruits and vegetables. It's really hard to argue with the benefits of, of fruits and vegetables. They've been shown to lower risks of heart disease, uh, lower risks of cancer, and just a lot of other things that affect longevity affect how long you live, mortality rates, that sort of thing. Three to four servings of, of, of a variety, a small variety, different, think colors, different color fruits and vegetables throughout the day. Just three to four servings is enough to reap all those benefits. You, you don't need to eat 15 servings of vegetables. If you like to, right, 
If you like farting a lot, which I do, but not enough to eat that many vegetables, if you like, you know, um, if, if you enjoy them, especially if you're eating like a plant-based diet, you know, if you're a vegan or something, you don't really have a choice. But like, if you like eating vegetables, go for it. But you don't need to eat that many. Three to four servings of vegetables a day, and you get all those benefits. It's really about all you need. Um, so just some, some good, not, they're not all created equal, but like I said, you go for variety a little bit. Apples, bananas, peppers, different color, different colored peppers, berries, grapes, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, um, squash, leafy greens like spinach, chard, uh, kale, not iceberg lettuce on a taco, uh, oranges. Again, go for different colors. Three to four servings. Don't 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 get upset if you eat four servings of broccoli. Like you're fine. Okay, just try. Generally speaking, to shoot for variety throughout the throughout the, the week, throughout the day, throughout the month, as you eat, as you eat all the other stuff, and you'll be you'll be you'll be in good shape. Your bases will be covered. If you're really struggling with that, you're really struggling to hit your fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, I like to mix them into shakes. I like to mix berries into shakes, bananas. Uh, as far as fruit, that's pretty easy. You can mix powders. You can get like spinach powder, kale powder, that sort of thing. It's, it doesn't really have too much of a taste. You throw that in a smoothie, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not the same as eating whole foods, but it's still pretty darn good. You can supplement with like athletic greens or juice plus, whatever. If you need a supplement with fruits and vegetables, go for it. But try, to, try your best to eat three to four servings of whole food fruits and vegetables a day, and you'll be good. Don't worry about so-and-so says I need to eat, you know, two kilograms of, of veg cruciferous vegetables every day. You don't. You just don't need to. Do it if you want to, but you don't need to, okay? One more thing I want to mention, and that is um, caffeine. Caffeine's the other food group <laughs> that causes a lot of confusion. Caffeine is an ergogenic. It is a social, stigma-free, relatively harmless, harmless performance-enhancing drug. It's a PED, caffeine. It's just a PED that everybody's cool with. I'm an I'm an addict. I'm, I have a physical addiction to caffeine, and I'm I'm fine with that. I get headaches if I don't get it in the morning, and I'm a huge jerk, and I want to kill everybody. And I'm just kind of fine with that because I always drink it. The only two practical reasons I could think of to not consume caffeine are the following: number one, if you get it from a from a crappy source, okay, if you get it from from a coffee drink with a lot of sugar in it, even just black coffee with a lot of sugar, I would consider that a poor way to get caffeine. Those like, you know, Starbucks lattes and everything, or I don't know about lattes. I, I don't know the terminology. You know what I'm talking about. The stuff that tastes really good. The stuff that, you know, the kids are kids are like, oh, I drink coffee all the time and it's great. I love it, you know. And they're not drinking black coffee. They're drinking like milkshakes, basically. That stuff's bad. If you're getting caffeine from soda, that's not good. If you're getting it from a lot of, there's a lot of garbage pre-workout supplements out there, that's really not that great either. Um, black coffee is the answer as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you can't drink black coffee, if you, if you don't like the taste or whatever, um, but you still want to get that buzz, take a caffeine pill. I mean, I know that sounds bad, like with, you know, Saved by the Bell and all that stuff, but it's, it's, it's really not. It's really not that bad. Uh, I like the taste of a good cup of coffee, but I'm really just, I'm really just trying to get high, honestly. So if, <laughs> if that's, if, 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 if you need caffeine, um, you want to get this, all the ergogenic, ergogenic aid, um, qualities from it, but you don't like coffee, take a caffeine pill. That's, that's what I, that's what I would say. Maybe talk to your doctor first. The last thing, the reason, the last gripe I have with, with caffeine is that it, it again, like alcohol, it messes with your sleep. I cut myself off after 10 o'clock each day. 10 in the morning, I don't drink anything past 10 in the morning. For a lot of people, it's gonna be like 9 a.m. to noon. It's kind of, you gotta experiment a little bit. If I drink coffee into the day, it really messes with my sleep. It's hard for me to get to sleep, it's hard for me to stay asleep. So again, I cut myself off at, at 10 o'clock. Um, I have about three big cups, probably a, amount to about five or six regular cups. 
and then I'm, I'm good. So caffeine, don't worry about it. Drink it if you like it, but just make sure it's coming from a good source and make sure you're not drinking it too close to bedtime. Keep it in the morning. You'll be, you'll be fine. All right. Let me talk about... So you could turn the video off here if you want to, if you're even with me still. 40 minutes in. I talked about that really sustainable model, that on thrall diet, that Jim Wendler's diet, uh, and then the one that I talked about, logging your food and finding low-hanging fruit and making those very, very small, easy, simple changes throughout your life, that will get you very, very far. But if that's not good enough for you, if that's not working for you, which it might not be, it would just work for most people, okay? I'm playing 80-20 here, that's the whole the burrito thing. If you really want to take your, your nutrition game to the next level, you can do the following. It involves trying a bunch of different diets over the course of several months, maybe even years. The important thing to consider about that is the way you think about a diet. You need to change your, your mindset from this diet that I'm going on is going to help me lose a bunch of weight. Change it from that to I'm using this diet as an experiment to see how I feel about it, to see how I feel when I'm on it, to see how sustainable it is, to see if it's actually getting me the results that I want. And you take what you like away from it, you leave what you don't like or what's not working for you, and you use that to find the next diet, right? I'm gonna talk, I split that up into like four very distinct phases that you go through. And I wanna talk about phases of, of, of diet experimentation. And I want to talk about some ground rules first before I go into what those phases are. Excuse me. Dang it. Ground rules. So this is really important. When you start a diet, you need to see it through duration wise. If it's 21 day diet, if it's a seven day diet, if it's a, a 30 day diet, if it's a three month diet, you need to do it for that prescribed amount of time. And you need to actually do it. You don't make your own rules like, well, it says gluten-free, but I like toast in the morning, so that won't hurt. You're not doing the diet anymore if you're doing that, okay? Do the diet, as it says, to the letter, and do it for the length of time that it says to do it. If it doesn't give you like a specific duration, say like keto, you know, if you're going keto, um, Go with what the author or what the creator of the diet says is the effective amount of time in order for those necessary changes to take place. So keto, for instance, a lot of people don't a lot of people don't get keto adapted, fat adapted, so to speak, until um, about three months in, uh, sometimes six months, whatever. So in that case, you would go for three months. If there's no duration that's spoken of at all, then just do it for 30 days. Whatever your diet is, if there's no prescribed duration, do exactly what it says to do for 30 days and take notes, see how you feel. Again, did you progress toward your goals? Uh, do you think you could keep it up? Are there elements of it that you hated? Are there elements of it that made you feel terrible? Are there elements of it that made you feel great? Keep all that in mind and use that to select the next diet, okay? Um, second thing is prep, meal prep. I already talked about this a bunch, is everything. I don't think that there is a diet on the face of the earth that doesn't require food prep to be successful. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Like, I guess if you have, if you have a budget for a meal service or you have the budget for, uh, for a chef, um, or you have, yeah, that's about it. If you have a personal chef or a meal service, that might be the exception. Every, for everybody else, though, for the rest of us, you got to prep your meals. It's a, it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Um, the third thing, you could hang out in each phase for as long as you want, for as long as you as you feel you need to. You can repeat diets, say in phase three, which I call the macro phase. You can repeat diets. For as long as you want to to try to hone in on the, on the on a good 
progressive, sustainable pattern. Um, you can do that for 10 years if you want. A lot of people do. And then move into phase four when you're ready, which is the timing phase. You might not ever even, and then this is the fifth point, you might not even ever need to move to the next phase. So if you find that you're getting the results you want and you find that it's sustainable, <coughs> feel free to stop there. You're done. I mean, you don't have to even look at the rest of them. And then the sixth one, the sixth point I want to make before we start is some diets might overlap. So a phase one diet, which is like I call the health phase, a phase one diet, maybe you have type two diabetes and your doctor says, make sure that you eat 30 grams of carbohydrates or less per meal. That would technically fall into the macro phase, right? So that's fine because you're, you're still in phase one. You're just using a, a macro approach to, to do what you need to do, okay? So those are, those are the rules. Let's talk about the phases. And I'm going to give examples of each. I'll put them in the description. I'm not really going to talk too much about all of them. I will, they'll come up a little bit, but if you want to see examples of each, I'll put, I'll put them in the description below. Phase one, eat for your health. For your health. <laughs> this is Dr. Steve Brule. Um, if you have a heart condition, if you have uh, diabetes, if you have Crohn's disease, celiac disease, if there's something that your doctor has said, hey, you're going to be in some serious trouble if you don't fix, if you don't fix the way you're eating. This is what I recommend. This is going to help you with your condition. If you have a diagnosed condition, and your doctor says there's a, there's a meal plan, there's a nutrition pattern, there's a diet that's going to help you with that, that's phase one. That's what you have to do. That is your priority. And the main reason for that, other than the obvious that you know you don't want to die, is that when your body has a serious health condition, it causes stress, all kinds of stress. And stress screws with recovery, it screws with your met metabolism, stress ruins everything, okay? So if there's a diet that you can do, basically to avoid stress, or at least mitigate it, um, that's, that's your priority, that's what you need to start with. And like I said, if, you, if you're eating thir less than 30 grams of carbs because of type 2 diabetes or whatever, and, and you find that you're, you're getting the, the results you want, you feel great, um, you, you're, you're, getting, you're, you're hitting your, whatever your goal is, you're progressing toward it, and you feel like it's not that big of a deal, you can keep it up for forever, there you go, you're done. You don't have to worry about the rest of the phases. For the rest of us, you might want to go to phase 2. Phase 2, by the way, if you don't have a serious health condition, or at least one that you're aware of, feel free to skip phase one, move straight to phase two. Phase two is <clears throat> what I call the uh, food sensitivity phase, the intolerance phase. Now, food sens sensitivity is kind of a, that's a, that's a hot topic. Um, there's something called gut permeability, which is a real thing. Leaky gut, you might, might have heard it called. And that's basically... Like when you're eating, when you're digesting foods, your, your, your food is supposed to stay in your digestive system. It's not supposed to leak out into your bloodstream, but it does sometimes. And it does on a spectrum of levels, okay? With a spectrum of symptoms, of associated symptoms. Some people might get GI distress. They might get diarrhea, like lactose intolerance. Is, you hear about that a lot. They might get low energy. They might get inflammation. These, of course, are also all forms of stress. So identifying intolerance, identifying what you're eating that's stressing you out, is, in my opinion, well, it's important enough to put it right, put it in one of the first phases. You might not have any problems at all, but you're not going to know for sure unless you, unless you try. So diets that I'm talking about here would be like, there's a, they're just called elimination diets, generally speaking. That's, that's, there's actually a book called The Elimination Diet, and it kind of walks you through a, a, a one approach of, of, of figuring out what foods um, you might have an intolerance, a food sensitivity toward. Uh, Whole30 is one that I've done. It's a pretty popular one. Uh, like any popular diet, it has a lot of cons. A lot of people like the crap on it. But I like it. I think it, I mean, if anything, 
if anything, it, it, it tells you that you're okay. It tells you you can more or less eat whatever you want. Um, and, and you don't have to worry about it when you move to the next phase. On the other hand, personally, I'll give you an example. I found out that I have a sensitivity to, to lactose. Um, I never thought I did. My brother's lactose intolerant, and he would throw up all the time and have diarrhea. Right? He'd crap his pants, basically. I thought that since I wasn't crapping my pants, I'm not lactose intolerant. Well, what I didn't realize is that I thought I was developing arthritis. At the time, the arthritis is, is very rampant in my family. And I had terrible joint pain all the time. Just not unbearable, but it was getting to the point. And I just talked it up to arthritis. Well, I went on a Whole30 diet because my wife wanted to do it. So, you know, okay, I'll do it too. I went without dairy and I just started feeling much better. Like it was, it was crazy. And uh, once I introduced it after the, the month was up, reintroduced it, a lot of my joint pain came back. So I realized through that trial and error that, you know, I have a, a sensitivity to dairy. So that's a really valuable piece of information because if I were to go to the next phase and make dairy a huge part of my, my diet with my, you know, measuring my caloric intake and, and my, my macronutrients, I would be hurting myself. I'd be shooting myself in the foot, even if I was doing everything else right. So, like I said, the worst thing that happens is you find out that you don't have any intolerances, and then you could just sleep easy. Um, you could do, like, there's, like, DNA testing, and there's uh, things like the, the Cyrex Array 10, which is, like, a food sensitivity test that a lot of people swear by. You could do that, and... It could give you a nice head start, but in my opinion, you still have to test it, right? Those things are not 100% accurate by any means. So you still need to find out, like, let, let's say that it says that you're not intolerant to something. And you start eating and you're like, well, I feel like crap, but the, you know, the, the, the test doesn't say um, I have a gluten sensitivity. It doesn't say I have a sensitivity to chicken or, or whatever. Um... So because the test doesn't say that, then you just you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm okay, because this piece of paper says I'm all right. Really, you're just killing yourself. Um, or that's, those are strong words, but you know what I mean, you're hurting yourself. Uh, on the other hand, it might tell you that you do have a sensitivity to something, but it turns out you don't. So you've been missing out on a food that you really enjoy that could help you with your goals, right? So again, do the test if you want to. But you still got to—you still actually have to test the tests, the results, right? Um, so that's phase two. Once you've identified intolerances or lack thereof, feel free to move to phase three. If if you found that the whole thirty diet gets you where you are, one nice thing about it—I've I had a, a couple of my clients have gone on it, and they've all lost weight you, between five and twenty-five pounds in a month. Both of those are, in my opinion, pretty solid results. So that's just kind of a side effect of it, right? It also teaches you to just keep an eye on what you're eating. It teaches you, like I said, you have to have, uh, you have to incorporate meal prep. It teaches you kind of how to do that, how to just, just general awareness of your of your, of your diet, of what you put in your face. Um, that's all very valuable stuff. Even if you don't identify any intolerances, even if you don't lose weight, you're still learning, right? You're still developing that skill set. Um, like I said, Whole30, I'm not selling it. It's just one that I happen to have used. And, I, and I, I, think, I think that despite some of the negatives, it's still a great uh, tool. It's still a great experiment to do on yourself. All right, phase three. Phase three is kind of where most results really pop. This has to do with calories. It has to do with macronutrients. Basically what it comes down to is, is, is those two things. And I've talked about why it's important to identify tolerances and take care of your health for all the, the, the potential stressor, stressors and avoiding inflammation and that sort of thing. That is, I can't speak to that enough. That is very important. But you guys are probably all familiar with the old adage, the calories in, calories out, right? Um, calories and quality calories, depending on how you split up your macros, macronutrients being protein, carbohydrates, and fats, that's really where you're going to get the results that most people talk about. That's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Like any, everything from like a beach body diet, like the 21 day fix to a ketogenic diet. We talked about that. That's focused on, on 
on macros that's focused on uh, low carb, high fats, to flexible dieting strategies like um, if it fits your macros, IFYM or Avatar Nutrition. All those things fall into this space, right? Um, the, the canned MyFitnessPal diet. The one, if you sign into MyFitnessPal, it asks you what your goals are and it gives you macronutrient ratios and, and, and daily calories that you need to take in. <coughs> this is one, it has this kind of like two different classes for this phase. One is like you're just generally either eliminating something like ketogenic diet. You're just very eating, basically eliminating carbohydrates and more or less eating whatever else you want. Even though that's not really a good way to do it, you can still get fat off of, uh, off of uh, keto. But what I'm saying is the main focus is just like one particular macronutrient, really. And then, I guess, fat, too. Uh, another example would be like the 21-day fix, where you're not necessarily, it's a beach body diet. You're not necessarily tracking everything, but you're splitting everything up into containers. You get like, depending on your body size, like four red containers a day, which is a protein source. You you have all these little containers and you're not exactly tracking meticulously what you eat, but as long as they're in their containers, you know that for the most part, you're going to be okay. And then you have the other side of things where you are tracking everything meticulously. You're tracking all the food you eat, all the fats, all the, all the carbs, all the, all the proteins and how much of them in relation to each other and how much of them in relation to your daily calories. And that is, is really, I mean, that's what just about every bodybuilder, any person that, that, that's driven by their physique or performance are usually dialing in their, their macros and their calories and they're tracking them, okay? That's phase three. And it is, it's not, they're all, all these phases are, 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 are the most important. But this is the one, again, that most diets tend to come out of. It's, it's the one where people tend to really see huge results. Um, so I'm not saying just start here. You can. You can if you want. I don't care. I, but I would recommend, I think, again, I think there's tremendous value in taking care of your health for the first phase and identifying food sensitivities, which, again, takes care of your health in the second phase so that you don't eat a bunch of stuff that's hurting you in the third phase. The fourth phase is one that when you're ready to go to it, if you ever even do, it's called the timing phase. And this is where we talk about different feeding timing approaches, food timing approaches. So like carb loading or back loading strategies, we're talking about fasting, intermittent fasting, restricted diet, restricted eating windows, <coughs> really fine-tuning when you get protein, when you get carbs. There's a bunch of different options there. And that can make a big difference. But again, I don't think it's the greatest approach to start there, necessarily. I think you're going to be a lot better informed. Think about it this way. Like, you know what to eat. You know what's going to hurt you. You know what's not going to hurt you. You know, from phase three now, you know how much of each you need to, to keep progressing toward your goals, which, by the way, is a moving target. I know I mentioned that. But, like, as you get smaller, you're going to need to eat less. As you get bigger, you're going to need to eat more. I mean, more or less. So you could use, back to phase three, I forgot to talk about this. You could use a service like Avatar Nutrition, which I've used before, which basically you weigh in every week, and it tells you, okay, now it, it adjusts things for you. Okay, now this week eat this much protein, this much carbs, this much fat. All right. And, and you do that and you say, yes, I was, I, 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 I did it. I was complying. I did everything I needed to. And then it tells you what to do. And it just keeps changing it for you. So you're always progressing where you need to go. The free version of that is TDE calculator, I think is great. T, totally da total daily energy expenditure calculator. And that'll basically tell you the same thing. I'll link to something with that too, that kind of explains how to, how to use, how to use that. I'll link to avatar. But anyways, back to the timing. Now you know how much of what to eat, what foods are good for you personally, and how you feel when you eat them. Now you can really get into when to eat them, right? Now, I said before, with protein, just focus on getting in what you need and good, complete sources of it. 
and, and the rest will kind of take care of itself. I still feel that way. But again, if you're really trying to fine tune things, timing can make a difference, okay? So you could start fooling around with carb loading, like I said, and, and fasting and, and protein timing, post, post-workout, that sort of thing, and really lock into where you need to be. Like I said when we started, the closer you get to your goals, the more complicated it gets, all right? The more lofty your goals are, the more complicated it gets. Hang on a second. All right. Uh, I think that is just about it. Uh, we talked about the four phases, talked about the rules, talked about how you don't have to even go in. Use that four-phase approach. You could still use the stuff I talked about in the beginning. It's going to work for most people. Again, I just wanted to give you what you probably want, some nice, complicated rules to follow. Um, that's my take on it. If you want to read my nutrition manifesto, I'll put a link to that. Um, just some key takeaways here, guys. Prep is everything. You have to meal prep. There's just no getting around it. If, you, if the food you need isn't there when you want it, you're going you're gonna to resort to convenience, and convenience is usually sabotage. Okay, It's usually going to throw you off the wagon. So you, you have to get the food ready. I, I, I've done some uh, videos on meal prep already. I'll link to those. I'm going to continue to probably put some of those out to show you that it's not as arduous of a task as you might think it is. It really does not have to be that hard. Um, you could batch things. It's just, it's just really not that hard. You just need to do it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about it. Um, again, I recommend most people start like with the sustainable approach like I talked about, the diets I mentioned. Um, that's about it, guys. Uh, if you have questions about nutrition, we covered a ton, and I still didn't even really get into the details of anything, but I gave you enough to, to get the job done. If you have questions, though, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to have an argument with me over my opinions, which some people might, and that's totally fine. I'd, I'd love to, love to hear those as well. Please subscribe to this channel to stay, uh, stay tuned with this, uh, zero to burrito series and, uh, other videos I put out as well. And you guys have a great day. All right. Thank you very much.